Um, still on the same subject, our final speaker is Mr. Ken Shimizu from Kijima, Japan. Um, he'll talk about uh, control effect of hydraulic dampers installed in high-rise buildings, and there'll be two types uh, on his study on conventional passive oil dampers and semi-active switch oil dampers, and there'll be record, records and studies done uh, during earthquakes uh, that were subjected to, uh, to three buildings. I think you had some uh, case studies here in uh, Niigata. Please welcome Mr. Khan. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, my name is Kan Shimizu from Kajima Corporation, Japan. Uh, I'm a researcher of the structural control devices, uh, especially about the semi-active oil dampers. Today, I'd like to, to introduce an observation record of high-rise building uh, with two kinds of oil dampers, and passive and semi, a very unique semi-active oil dampers. The records were obtained under uh, typhoon and large earthquakes. I would like you to show the ability of the semi-active oil dampers, which is verified from the observation records. First, I would like to show you about the buildings. Uh, the left picture shows the exterior of the building. It, it locates in Niigata Prefecture, Japan, and its building area is about 6,000 square meters. This picture show, uh, slide shows the plan and the sections. It has three, 31 floor above ground and one underground stories. Upper floors are used as hotel and the lower floors are used as office. Its total height is about 140 meters. The columns are concrete filled tube uh, structure and the beams are steel. I just said that two kinds of oil dampers are applied to this building. Uh, Japan is a very high risk in seismic hazards, so these dampers are mainly uh, aimed to reduce damping, uh, uh, to add damping and reduce the response to uh, severe earthquakes, but moreover in the transverse direction, which has a slender shape, uh, its heat dip ratio is about six, so not only to improve the safety against uh, severe earthquakes, but also to improve the habitability in the upper floor hotels, the oil dampers in the uh, transverse directions was upgraded to semi-active oil dampers. The total number of the semi-active oil dampers is 72, and the location uh, dis distributions are shown in the red box. In the long tunnel direction, 40 passive oil dampers are applied. This building also has an observation system. At the beginning, we mainly aim to observe the record, uh, the response of the high-rise building during typhoons, so only the roof floor acceleration and the fifth floor semi-active oil dampers or pressures and strokes are measured. But after the uh, large earthquake in 2004, we added a accelerometer at the first basement floor to uh, record some earthquake re records. Okay, then I'd like to introduce our unique semi-active oil dampers. We nicknamed it HIDAX. Uh, it stands for High Damping System in the Next Generation, so I like to call the semi-active oil damper HIDAX after this. HIDAX is uh, usually installed into the interstory of the building, like this picture. Uh, it's usually installed with braces. The lower part of the braces is disconnected to the lower floor, and I'd like to show the behavior of the simple animation later. This picture is uh, focused on the, the damper part. Its maximum force is 1,500 kilonewton. Piston stroke is 120 millimeters. Its diameter is 370 millimeters, and the length is about 1.4 meters. The power consumption is only 50 watt. High depth consists of the damper and the controller. Each controller attached to the, uh, each device, so this picture shows the whole system. It's a closed system, so it's very easy to use as in conventional passive oil dampers. This figure shows the inner mechanism of the damper. Between the two chambers, a control valve, uh, shown in the green box, is set. According to the signal from the sensors, uh, which are pressures and strokes, computer controller calculates and returns the control signal 
to open or close the valve. It is very easy. It is just open or close. So a very simple system. And I like to show the behavior. Oops. Normally, the control valve is kept closed. Uh, it is shown in the green box. So uh, it means that the damping coefficient is very large. So in that time, only the braces deform and accumulates the strain energy. And it is shown in the red part. If it becomes red, the strain energy is accumulated to the braces. And at the maximum point of the vibration, which the velocity changes direction, the control valve opens and the accumulated strain energy at the braces are uh, absorbed at the damper as a heat. Hydax uh, continues this movement. Under this control law, hydrox is forced displacement relation and uh, an harmonic uh, excitation becomes like this blue paradigm shapes. The area of the forced displacement relation shows the energy absorption capacity of the dampers, so, and this yellow oval shows the forced displacement relation of the conventional passive oil dampers. So comparing the areas of the blue part and the yellow part, you can see that hydrox can anticipate uh, more than twice an energy than a conventional oil damper under an harmonic excitation. Okay, then I'd like to show the uh, observation record. First, uh, during the typhoon. In 2004, 10 typhoon hit Japan. Uh, it was the maximum number since the Japan Meteorological Agency uh, began to, st st uh, to take statistics in 1951. And one of them, typhoon 16, recorded a maximum wind velocity of about 20 million per second in Niigata Prefecture, uh, which the building locates. The left figure shows the typhoon tracks and the location of the building. The right figure shows the time history of the wind. Okay, this figure shows the uh, observed record during typhoon 16. The, this right up figure shows the top floor accumulation time history, and the right lower figure shows the stroke time history of Hydax. I showed the uh, 10 minutes time histories. So from the time, uh, time history of the stroke, you can see a long period vibration, uh, which is typical for the response to, to strong winds. The left figure shows the force stroke relation of Hydax. Uh, the maximum force is about 60 kN, and the amplitude of each uh, cycle is under 0.5 millimeter. It's a very, very small vibration. Even under such small vibrations, uh, Hydax shows its typical uh, parallelogram shape that I have shown uh, before. So it means that Hydax control is working well. Uh, in order to verify the effect of the damper, so we uh, estimated the damping ratios. And this figure shows the free vibration ways which was calculated by the random decrement technique. Uh, during Typhoon 16, the damping ratio was uh, estimated 5.3%. It is a very high value, but uh, to clearly show the effects, we also estimated the damping ratio from micro uh, During micro the vibration level of the micro is very, very small. It's small enough to neglect the effect of the damper, so we considered this as a uh, without damper case. And it was 1%, and this 1% is very standard damping for a an, an steel high-rise structure in Japan, so we consider this as a without damper case. Comparing this result, you can see that the damping ratio is highly increased, about 5% by the effect of the damper. This figure shows the top floor acceleration. The blue line shows the width height X case, uh, which is the observation record. That, uh, that I sh this is the same that I showed before, and the red one is the without Hydax case. This is the simulated uh, results. And you can see that if without a damper, uh, the maximum amplitude would be twice, and then a comfortable vibration would continue for a long time. Okay, then I'd like to show the records of the earthquakes. Uh, the building, uh, that I said, the building locates in Niigata, and it completed in 2003. And after that, it uh, subjected to three large earthquakes. Uh, the first one was mid Niigata Prefecture earthquake in 2004, and then the Noto Hanto earthquake in 2007, and then at uh, last, the uh, Chuitsoki earthquake in 2007. The magnitude of them is from 6.8 to 6.9. 
The epicentral distance is the uh, Chuotoki is the nearest, and it's about 60 kilometers. This table shows the maximum value of the records. Uh, after the main shock of the mid Niigata Prefecture earthquake, we set the, we added the accelerometer at the first basement floor, so the records of <coughs> them doesn't exist. The Chuotoki earthquake was the nearest earthquake, so. Its uh, maximum acceleration at the first basement floor is about 24 centimeters per second and about 100 centimeters per square second at the roof floor. The maximum force is 604 kilo newton, and this height axis is applied to more than 20 high rise buildings in Japan, and some of them have an, an observation system, but uh, this is the maximum records. I'd like to show some time histories. Uh, the left figure shows the absolute acceleration time history at the top floor and the first basement floor. This is the longitudinal direction, and this shows the uh, transverse direction. Uh, the maximum uh, acceleration is 100, about 100 centimeter per square second, but it's only uh, one time. Yeah. And this figure shows the full stroke relation of the height ax. The left figure shows the record of the mid Niigata Prefecture earthquake, and the right figure shows the record of Chuetsoki earthquake. Uh, the amplitude of the Chuetsoki earthquake is five millimeters. Uh, I've showed the full stroke relation during typhoons, and the amplitude was 0 0.5 millimeters. So from 0 0.5 to five millimeters, uh, variable range of the uh, vibration and uh, external forces is typhoon and earthquake, virus uh, external forces. Hydex shows its typical power of shape, so it's working well. Okay, we also estimated the damping to uh, verify the effect of the dampers. And the horizontal axis it shows the maximum roof floor displacement and the vertical axis shows the damping ratios. Uh, each symbol shows the estimated damping ratios of, the, of each earthquake. The left figure shows the result of the long, longitudinal direction with passive floor dampers. The estimated damping was uh, from six, four to five percent and in the transverse direction in the right figure it becomes six to seven percent. I show that uh, without damper the damping ratio would be 1%, so you can see that in both directions, the uh, damping ratio is high, highly increased. And one more, I should have predicted damping ratio from the uh, structural design models. Uh, I've shown in the left side, uh, each column and beams are models as a beam elements, and the, passive, uh, the dampers are models uh, model as an um, passive or damper in both direction. And because uh, we predicted the damping ratio from uh, calculating the complex eigenvalue analysis, so it must be a linear damper. So in the long tuna direction with passive or dampers, predicted damping ratio and estimated damping ratio is very close. So it works that what uh, we expected. It matches very well. And in the transverse direction, the estimated damping ratio is highly increased uh, compared with that of the predicted. This difference is the effect of the uh, semi-active control. So it is verified that uh, by semi-active control, the adding damping is highly increased uh, compared with that with the predicted, but with passive dampers. I'd like to show the time top four time histories so of with and without cases. Uh, the blue light shows the with dampers which are the observed records, and the, left line, uh, the red line shows the without damper case, uh, which is simulated. The upper figure shows the time history in the long tuner direction, and the lower figure shows the time history of the, in the transverse direction, especially in the transfer, uh, transverse direction with high dax. Without damper, the maximum amplitude would be three times, and the larger uh, vibration would continue for more than a minute. Yeah. So in conclusion, I showed an, uh, some observation record during uh, typhoons and earthquakes with uh, semi-active ore dampers and passive ore dampers. The four-stroke relation of high dax showed its typical power shape under both earthquake and typhoon. 
The vibration levels was from 0 0.5 to 5 millimeters, and estimated damping ratios were 5% for typhoon and about 7% for earthquake records, uh, which were greatly increased from damping ratio of the micro tremor record, uh, which we considered without damp damper cases. And the effectiveness of the additional damping of Hydax is verified. It was about 1.7 times larger as that predicted by an impassive boy dampers. Thank you for your attention.